I asked Professor Rinaldi what teachers need to know about vocabulary. He pointed out an important distinction between two ways of learning vocabulary. Let's listen. What's the most important thing for teachers to understand about vocabulary? One really useful distinction for teachers to keep in mind is that between incidental vocabulary learning and intentional vocabulary learning. So incidental would be where our students pick up new words without meaning to through uh, reading or listening. And as I said, research suggests a, a great deal of second language vocabulary can be learned this way. Uh, and that's why we need to be doing things like encouraging our learners to do a lot of reading outside of class. Reading for pleasure, extensive reading, and also listening to English language radio prams or, or English pop songs or English language movies or TV shows that provide some sort of comprehension support in terms of uh, captions or subtitles or something like that so they can make connections between form and meaning and acquire new words incidentally. But we can't just rely on incidental learning. Our students won't learn all the vocabulary they need that way. They also need to be learning words intentionally, which means making a deliberate effort to identify words that will be useful to them and also doing things that will help those words stick in their memories so that they're available uh, to be used later. And intentional learning can involve things like, at the very beginning stages, studying vocabulary lists, which are just high-frequency words in the target language listed next to their equivalents in the student's first language. This is a perfectly acceptable way of trying to, uh, to learn vocabulary in the beginning stages, trying to memorize these lists. And then later in their, their careers, students can use vocabulary notebooks or word cards or flashcards, which are paper-based, or nowadays there are a lot of terrific web-based flashcard tools that are, that are uh, free. So incidental dental learning, intentional learning, that's an important distinction. One more important word, starting with I, that, that teachers will want to remember is incremental. So vocabulary is learned incrementally. Uh, we have to remember that it doesn't all happen at one time. You don't learn all you need to know about a word in a single meeting with that word. Uh, we learn what we need to know through repeated exposures to words in different contexts of use so that our knowledge builds up over time. So it's important in our teaching to find opportunities to give students uh, those repeated exposures and when they happen, to draw students' attention back to those words and to try and find new things uh, about them that we can point out to our students. Professor Rinaldi said that there are two ways of learning vocabulary, incidental vocabulary learning and intentional vocabulary learning. Incidental vocabulary learning occurs when students are working together in conversation or reading and their focus is on what they are talking about or what they are reading about. The vocabulary may just be in the background. They may be using it, they may not know it, and they may be picking it up without really realizing it. They are learning it incidentally. In contrast, students can engage in intentional vocabulary learning, meaning that they are focusing on the words. They are there to look at the words, they are there to study the words, and they know that they're trying to learn particular words. This activity is intentional. Professor Rinaldi points out that both of these processes are very important for students to learn enough vocabulary. Students learn intentionally when they work on a vocabulary lesson. The internet has lots and lots of opportunities to find vocabulary for students to learn intentionally. They learn incidentally when they participate in fun, interesting, language-rich activities in English. And again, the internet is a great source for these. One type of activity is called fan fiction. And we're gonna call on one of our experts, Shannon Sorrow, to introduce you to what students can do when they work in fan fiction, such as fiction about Sherlock Holmes, the novel. <laughs> 